it's, uh, it's amazing what the students have put on today. And uh, for me, it's just blown me away. Thank you so much for having me. And it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity. I want to bring to your attention a few things. And I want you to take away a few things from this discussion. One is thinking differently. The other is technology. How many people here have a smartphone? It's become commonplace. We're all connected. The other one is health. Not health care, but health. And I'll explain that in a little bit. I also want to bring up the opportunity for community engagement and also thinking differently in terms of how we deliver care and being optimistic about the future. Medicine is a really interesting thing. It takes about 15 years for any changes in medicine to actually become enacted upon. And it's one of the slowest businesses or industries that we see. We're the only industry that still uses a fax machine, for example. And that's acceptable to us. We can do better. As we go through this talk, I want to just bring up a few key points. One of them is thinking about health in terms of lifespan. From the cradle to the grave taking care of mothers that are carrying children all the way through to our aged population and how well we do doing that and how we allocate resources to it. I want to refocus our attention on how we deliver care in terms of where we're at in the community. So here's a question for you. What would you do if I asked you, if I gave you $750 billion, how would that change health care? How would that change health? Think about the impact this could have. So why do I ask that question? Well, it turns out that $750 billion is what we spend in this country every year on expenditures in health that have no impact on our health. How much does the United States spend on health care per year? It's about 20% of our gross domestic product. That's an unsustainable number. Well, it's okay because we have the best health in the world, right? We don't have any issues in this country. Not true. We actually rank near the worst of industrialized countries in terms of, of maternal, fetal, maternal baby outcomes. We need to do better. We have the resources. Are they in the right place? Over the course of the past three or four decades, We've had an immense amount of research that's happened in this country on being able to actually improve personalized medicine. Biosciences have given us cures, and it's a wonderful thing, but it's a very expensive proposition. And in order to sustain that, we need to figure out how to improve our care that we provide to our communities in a more cost-effective way and do it together. So change is the only constant that the world knows, right? And I think this quote really sort of typifies it all for me. It's better to build health, healthy, strong children than it is to try and repair broken adults. And that's the call to arms for the students here and the next generation. You all, and we're putting our faith in you, and we know you can do this. You have the technology. You have the skill set. You have the capability to understand the changes that we are starting now. You will need to complete them. And if we do this right, we can really focus on improving our health across our lifespan. So the 20th century was focused more on adding years to somebody's life. This century must be focused on adding life to those years. If we think about lifespan health development across the life course, you can understand there are particular times in our lives when we're all at risk. The first three years of our life is incredibly important. And what we do in the, our environment and how that impacts on us becomes a really key component. Our environment, how we react to it, uh, our internal environment, our socioeconomic status, all impacts on the development of our brain and our body. So if we think about this in terms of how it, it pans out as we age, so there's exposures. We all accept that prenatal smoking is not a good thing. Child abuse certainly is, is unacceptable. And problems with socioeconomic status in our childhood, not having a place to live, not having nutritious food to eat, impacts upon our genetics <clears throat> and, and how we actually express 
what we become. And it impacts on our biochemistry. And this ultimately impacts on how we look and how we actually express ourselves. Do we get diabetes? Do we get uh, different diseases as we age? And it starts in utero. It starts in mom's tummy. So, and another way to express this is, if we don't start to think about delivering health and effective health early on in life, we can start to see how things pan out as we age. Anxiety disorders, school failure, as we get older, obesity, elevated blood pressure, now the physical ailments start to impact on us. We start to see coronary heart disease become a more prevalent issue in our society. Diabetes, which is an epidemic in this country, and old age. So how do we think about these in terms of being able to take it to the next level? So right now, we're probably somewhere about here. You know, I just finished my soda, but we really are a country that deals with, with chronic diseases, right? We can do better, right? We can do better, and the students here will take us to a better place because they get it, because they know where we need to be. They're gonna be the ones that act upon these issues. We have to do this. And if you think about in terms of how we're able to do these things, all right, under normal circumstances, even in the best practices in pediatrics, we actually do okay. We don't do great, we do okay. And if we were actually able to do it properly, <clears throat> we would actually have a health trajectory that was infinite as we started to age. And you would be healthy throughout your whole life and pass away in your sleep at the ripe old age of 100. The challenge that we have is that many of us actually don't do well caring for our patients, and we don't have the opportunity to really improve their health. And this is the at-risk group. And if you think about this in terms of opportunity, we have such an opportunity to improve our socioeconomic status and how we actually care for people in this country that we have an opportunity to really do better. And it's, it, it's not hard to understand this. So in terms of opportunities, right, we want to reduce our risk factors. People say smoking is not good, right? We know that if we decrease smoking, that our health is better, that we, our, our overall health for our nation is better. But there's also other opportunities that we can have, we can introduce here. And that includes uh, protect, protective strategies. So being able to actually intervene and provide healthy dinners or healthy lunches or early child care for our, for our families and our, our patients becomes a really important part. And as we age, um, the whole concept here is to take our ages where we start to get these diseases like coronary artery disease and push them out to the 80s. So you can see early investment up front reduces the cost that we spend way down the line. And it's a lot cheaper to help a family find nutritious food, to help a mom take care of their infant, than it is to pay for coronary artery disease or chronic diabetes as we age. I think I'm having a tech issue here, guys. So. <clears throat> So there we go. So you can see moving it out changes our ability to provide good health care. So if you think about business, value is really quality over cost. And, and health care is a business. We don't like to say that, but it is a business with emotions. And if we really want to think about this properly, we would put value, value-based health care, quality over cost, and we'd include health development divided by the investment we put in. Early intervention, early investment pays off down the line. Stock market does that. If we get in early on a great stock, it pays dividends down the line. This is the same idea. But the difference is, is that we must invest in our communities and we must start thinking differently about how we do things. And from our perspective, it's the students, it's the, it's the next generation that's really gonna take us there. Because they are thinking differently. They're a team. They're thinking globally. They're connected. They have the technology to do this. And one of the, I think, amazing things that I've been able to witness over the past five years 
is the advancement of telemedicine, the advancement of telehealth, and how we've been able to connect and improve access to people who weren't able to access care before. Be that in a rural setting, be that in, in a, a disparate population area, be that in an area where people just can't simply get to clinics. They can't get transportation. We had a, a, a fantastic um, insight with a recent uh, project that we did where we had a diabetes monitor that actually allowed us to monitor women who were pregnant who had diabetes. We were able to monitor their sugars remotely and they didn't have to do anything. They would take their blood sugar, it would be uploaded to the cloud, that information was transmitted to our electronic medical record and we were able to intervene early on moms that needed help. And what that resulted in was a reduction of babies admitted to the neonatal intensive care unit by about eight bed days and that's at least $10,000 in savings. More importantly though, those babies didn't get heart issues because of their diabetes, because of their mom's diabetes. They didn't get kidney issues. And I can tell you, in the short term, it was much better for the families. In the long term, the impact will be almost unmeasurable because we've been able to actually intervene early and, and alleviate them developing that disease. We did a similar project in adults, took a high risk group of patients that had diabetes and we were able to reduce their visitation to the emergency department by 70%. We kept those people in their houses, in their communities, where they needed to be with their families, their friends, and their caregivers. We kept them out of the hospital 65% of the time as well. That's all cost savings, but all that aside, it's so much better for the patient. We have the tech. We know how to do these things. It's up to the next generation to do them and the glass is half full and I can tell you, being at the precipice of this, it's so exciting because when I talk to young people, the folks that are so dynamic in what they're able to do, it's, it's amazing. They understand teams and it really takes a team. We have to be part of our community and we have to do this right. It's always about the kids. Thank you so much. This is Wes Wesley. Wesley's one of my transplant patients, and I, I just want to let you know his mom said it was okay to put this picture up. So, hard not to smile when you see that. Thank you very much.